My sister always thought that she was smarter than me. So you know what I decide to do? I decide to show up on her special wedding day, wearing a wedding dress of my own, because secretly I'm in love with her man. He might not feel the same way, but I'm going to find out, and I don't care what happens, because I'm sick of her, and she's sick of me. As a child, I was made to believe that my older sister would always be my guardian angel. I always believed that she would protect me whenever I was in trouble, and always take care of me, because that's what sisters do. But as I grew older, my reality became a different one. The same sister who I thought would always have my back was the same person who... You know, brought me constant pain, shame, and embarrassment until she eventually became an enemy. In most families, it's usually the situation of parents pampering and treating their youngest child better than the older one. But in my case, oh boy, it was oh so much different. You see, as the youngest child, I did not get any preferential treatment or special care like most younger children would. But my older sister, oh boy, did she ever... As much as I can remember, my older sister Emma has always been the perfect child for my parents. Most especially for a uh, mom. Uh, you know, ugh. according to my mom, she was spotless, without blemish, and the kind of child any parent would ever wish for. The truth is, it would have been a totally different thing if it were just my parents who gave me a tough time, but it was not just them. Emma was part of them too. She knew so well that I was desperately trying to get the same love that she received from our parents and to feel like a member of their little family. I had to be like Emma and look up to her like she was some sort of god. But instead of encouraging me, she always made things so much worse. Before Emma turned 10, she turned into a proud, arrogant girl who always wanted things to go her way. As a child... She would openly tell me that her mother and father loved her more because she was special and that they did not love me, because there was nothing special about me. Imagine hearing that from your older sister as a child. I mean, it does a lot of crazy things to you. The worst was, every time I tried to confirm that from my parents, they would shush me away like I was an unimportant person, or Emma would deliberately bring up a topic for discussion at the same time so my parents could focus more on her while I'd be left hanging. There was also times Emma would blatantly tell me straight to my face, and I mean right to my face, that I simply would never be good enough or as good as her, because, oh, I was dumb. That's what she would say, I was dumb, stupid, and should have been a dog inside of a human being. Yes, yeah, she said all that right to my face without any cares in the world about my little feelings. She always just um, had a way of making it look like she was teasing. But guys, I'm telling you, in reality, I knew she meant every single word that she was saying. So, throughout our childhood and teenage years, Emma and I did not get along, and it continued like that till I got into college. For the first two years in college, I avoided Emma like an absolute plague. Both in college and at home, I mean, we barely talked to each other because all her conversations would just revolve around how she was more intelligent and prettier than everybody else. Everything about her, and I mean everything, was all about competition this, competition that, and if she did not think she was better than her colleagues, friends, or neighbors, she simply could not rest until she was. Sadly, her competitive nature pushed her to becoming a beast in a human skin. Yup, she would treat other people badly and talk rudely to anybody that she simply did not like. You see, I remember one Thanksgiving, we had a couple of family members from both my maternal and paternal family join us for dinner. And while we were having dinner, a few nosy family members decided to ask Emma some questions about college and how she was coping. You guys, Emma used to use the opportunity to blow her trumpet and brag about how she was on her way to becoming a certified medical doctor. Wow. And a couple of her side achievements, and she made it so obvious that she loved the attention that she was getting, and that's why she frowned when the spotlight turned to me. As soon as my aunt asked me about college and how I'm dealing with Emma, uh, she cut in rudely and said, Oh, Vera. Vera's wasting away her life in music. Ugh. She's so unserious and clearly doesn't have the brains for science. Who knew? Oh, maybe she thinks she might get famous one day. Ugh. 
Geez, I was embarrassed, and I could not even say a word to defend myself. It was so awkward that everybody could not stop exchanging looks. They kept looking at my parents with the hopes that one of them would say something to caution Emma. But when my parents also pretended like nothing happened, my aunts and uncles let the matter slide. Thankfully, my aunt, who asked all those questions, was smart enough to see, uh, you know, that my feelings were absolutely hurt. So she changed the topic almost immediately, and a uh, topic she believed uh, would not cause any hurt feelings, but the topic only made things absolutely worse, you see. It wasn't a very serious topic, per se. It was just that she chose the worst timing ever to ask me about boys. Ugh, boys. By the time Emma was in a relationship with her boyfriend named Jake, a guy I shared some classes with. As for me, I simply was not in a relationship yet, and I did not think anything was wrong with it. As expected, when my aunt asked Emma if she was in any relationship, Emma used the opportunity again to brag about her boyfriend and how they were looking in the direction of marriage. Knowing that my aunt would turn to me next after Emma bragged about Jake, she said, Oh, poor thing, I'm sorry you can't relate to anything I said, because you don't even have a love life. I know she said that on purpose, guys, so she could just make me mad and trigger my aunt to ask more questions, and her plan worked. As soon as my aunt asked if it was true I wasn't dating, Emma cut out and said the reason I didn't have a boyfriend was because I didn't have good looks like her, and that if I was half as pretty as her, I would have men flocking towards me. Well, I'll be honest with you guys. What Emma said to our extended family during dinner hurt and challenged me, and because of that, I badly wanted to prove to her that good things could actually come out of my music career. Uh, so, there was this big music competition that's been going on in college, and I had no interest in partaking in the competition, but because of what Emma had said, it caused me to have a change of mind. Without wasting much time, I registered for the competition and began to make preparations for it. It was a very, very big competition. So it did not only require time and practice, but it also required lots of resources, campaigning, and of course a couple of other things. Thanks to my supportive friends, things went exactly as planned. Through constantly campaigning, I gathered a lot of support from other students and so many other people I didn't even know. All that while I was busy investing my time and resources into the competition. I didn't know that Emma was furious that I was involved in something that big. There were a couple of times she tried to ask me about the competition and how I was making progress, but I never gave her a solid response because it was really weird for her to suddenly become nice to me. It wasn't until a week before the main competition that I realized Emma's true intentions towards me. So, a week before the main competition began, I went to school with the hopes of continuing my campaign from where I stopped. And to my greatest horror, everything has been vandalized. I'm talking my equipment, my banners, and every other thing that would have been helping me in the competition were all destroyed. Also, not to mention, some of my posters have been marked with a big X with a red marker all around school, and some had funny emojis on it, even. Just to humiliate me, I guess. But you know what? I would actually say the most embarrassing part was people gathered around uh, the scene to find out what had happened, and I hated the sad and pitiful look that they had on their faces. All through my years in college, I did not step on anybody's toes. I didn't have any enemies, so I could not think of anything that could do such a horrible thing to me. While I was at the scene just trying to wrap my head around who could destroy weeks worth of my hard work, Emma and her boyfriend Jake walked to the scene and instead of showing her concern about what happened, Emma laughed at me in a very, very bad way. She even took pictures of me crying with my mascara running and she said, Ah, oh, ugh. Poor thing. Too bad you're out of the competition. <laughs> Merely hearing her say that caused an outburst of emotions, and I was forced to run to the ladies' room to cry. I'd never been embarrassed like this in all my life. 
As for the competition, sadly, I was disqualified because I did not meet up with the required number of votes, and as well as the other criteria because of the unfortunate thing that happened to me. To show how absolute desperate that I actually was, I even spent the whole day trying to convince the competition host to give me another opportunity, but even if they did, there was no way that I could just meet up, especially when that such a major setback that I had. Um... Later in school that week, I got information that it was Emma who paid some people to vandalize my campaign. Yep, and I could not believe it. I was so mad that when I got home that day, I confronted Emma about it and we had a nasty fight. Sadly, Emma did not show any iota of a remorse for what she had done and my parents supported her as usual. My mother even claimed that Emma did what she did in my best interest, and she said all manners of nonsense to support her little golden child. Well, at that point, I had enough of their one-sided love, and I could not take it anymore. So I left the house in anger and ended up spending the next couple of days at my friend's place. So, you guys remember the day my campaign, uh, materials, and equipment got vandalized? Well, I didn't tell you guys that Jake and I formed a great friendship since that day. It happened that after Emma humiliated me in front of everybody, I ran to the ladies' room. Jake followed. He came to check if I was doing all right, and from there, he told me that he hated how Emma always treated me and everyone around her. I know he was only trying to pacify me, but we ended up having a very long talk, and in the process, Jake opened up and told me that he had always liked me, and he asked me to be his girlfriend. Well, because my conscience did not let me, I just told Jake I could not be his girlfriend because he was already dating Emma. So, we agreed to just be friends. And you know what? Long story short, as the years passed, Jake and I got closer to one another without Emma's knowledge. Even after he graduated from college, we still remained in contact and always knew what was going on in our lives. Now, the reason I'm sharing all this here is because just two days ago, Emma came to college and embarrassed me in the worst way possible, and this time around, it was because of Jake. Already two years had passed, and she and Jake had graduated from college, so I was so shocked to see her here. Well, that afternoon, I was hanging out with my friends when Emma stormed inside the hall that we were in and began to yell my name. When she spotted me, she walked straight to me and attacked me. She pulled my hair with so much anger, and she called me a man-snatcher. Then she began to say very humiliating things to me about how I've always wanted everything that she has, how I went about spending my life trying to be her, and how I snatched her boyfriend away from her because I was too ugly to get a man of my own. She said so many mean things and embarrassed me in front of everyone that was there. Well, and when my friends were finally able to get me out of Emma's firm grip, I walked out of the place with my head covered in shame. It turned out that Emma had seen a year-plus thread of chats between Jake and me, and even when there was clearly nothing implicating in our conversations, Emma still chose to get drastic and make a scene. I'd say the craziest part is that my parents are in full support of Emma's overreaction, and they've been making life very difficult for me because they believed I tried to steal Emma's boyfriend. Since my childhood, I've always hated it when I'm accused of something that I simply did not do. And this time around, I'm thinking of really dating Emma's boyfriend because he's a sweetheart. You know, after all, I've grown to like him more in the past few months. I'd say the only issue is that a part of me thinks it's wrong to date Emma's boyfriend because she's my sister. But the other part of me thinks that Emma absolutely deserves it, especially because of the cruel things that she has done to me. So, my question, I guess, to you beautiful people is... Would I be the a-hole for wanting to date my sister's boyfriend even if it is wrong? If Emma were in my shoes, I'm sure she would have done worse and would not even care about my feelings. Guys, I would need your comments and suggestions, please. I really look forward to them. Thank you. Update number one. Hello, guys. Uh, thank you all so much for the suggestions. It's such a relief to know that some of us have been in a similar situation where our parents treated our siblings better than us. It's so sad, and it sucks. I've read all your comments, and I see how you're all concerned for me. Well, you know what? I'll be honest with you guys. I'm not using Jake as a revenge toy. I actually love him, and I know he loves me too, and in the past few months of spending time with him, I've come to realize why Emma loves him a lot. 
He's caring, he's supportive and sweet, and he's just every woman's dream. Even my parents love him, and I'm sure they already see him as the perfect son-in-law. You know, speaking of my parents, did I tell you guys they kicked me out of the house? Funny how they only take action when they believe I've done something wrong or wronged Emma. But they fail to take action whenever Emma wrongs me. The day I got kicked out of the house, I returned to see some of my boxes in the living room. Emma had taken it upon herself to get my things out of my room. She would threaten my parents that it was either I left the house or she would never visit them again. And my parents chose the former. When I entered the living room to see my stuff, my parents made it sound like they were punishing me for trying to ruin my sister's relationship. But deep down, they knew that they picked Emma over me again. So some of you still have been asking how I found out that it was Emma who paid people to vandalize my campaign equipment. Just to be sure I wasn't assuming. Well, I'll tell you now. It was Jake who told me that Emma was the one who paid those guys. In fact, he was there with her when she met with the guys that ruined my campaign. So, you see, I wasn't really assuming in any way. So, as of now, I'm currently crashing at a friend's place. If I say that I'm mad and I want to badly punish him onto my parents for all the cruel things that they've done to me, that would be an understatement, and guys... Over the past few weeks, I've read all your comments and suggestions over and over again, just to be sure that I'm making uh, not any hasty decisions. But at this point, I think I know what I want. I want Jake, and if it means using him to get my sister and parents, then I'm afraid I'll have to do that. So soon, I'll be meeting with Jake to discuss the state of our friendship, and I plan on asking him to be my boyfriend. Even though two years have passed since he asked me to be his girlfriend, but don't worry, guys. I'll tell you all about it in my next update. I know it took me two months to make this update, and I apologize for keeping you all waiting. But thank you for the support and advice and encouragement. Updates number two. Hello, everyone. So, first of all, I would like to thank you for the support and very helpful comments, as always. I also understand that most of your comments and suggestions are from good hearts with good intentions. But trust me guys, I'm fully aware of what I'm doing. So in my last update, I mentioned that Jake and I were supposed to meet and talk about us. Unfortunately, the first meeting did not hold because of Jake's work schedule. But thankfully, we fixed the second meeting the following week and it was very successful. I know you guys have been asking about the meeting and how it turned out, and I sincerely apologize for being silent for weeks. Well, the meeting turned out well, and Jake accepted to be my boyfriend, even though it seemed awkward. Somehow, I was afraid that he would turn me down, but he was over the roof. He hugged me so tight and lifted me off the ground, and jeez, I've never seen a man get so happy over a woman. Also, on the day Jake and I met, I found out that Jake and Emma had fixed a date for their wedding, and they've been acting, uh, you know, the planning of the wedding without my knowledge. As expected, no one in my family called to tell me that Emma was getting married. Since I got kicked out, maybe they thought it was totally unimportant to tell me about Emma and Jake's wedding so I don't ruin things for them or try to steal my darling sister's groom. I know you all may be thinking I'm a little cuckoo upstairs, but trust me, I'm not. At this point, I'm sure I love Jake and I want him to be mine. You guys want to know why I didn't know Emma was planning her wedding? Well... That jerk blocked me on all mutual social media platforms when I didn't do anything to her. You know, the last post I saw on her page was a post that she made about getting rid of the weeds in her life, and it did not in any way cross my mind that she was referring to me. So, as I was saying, the two lovebirds' wedding is in a month, and sadly, I've not been invited to my own sister's wedding, but that doesn't mean I won't show up. I'll simply invite myself and ensure to make the day a grand day for me. After all, it's not every day your sister and your lover get to meet each other, now is it? I'll make another update after the wedding, and trust me, I won't be hoarding any tea from you guys. Thank you so much. Update number three. Hey guys, um, well, you're all absolutely the best. Sincerely, I cannot appreciate you for all the comments and words of encouragement. They've been a very bright light to me and my extremely dark days. I expected that I would make this update sooner, but a couple of things happened and I had to go off to social media for a bit. So, I would love to say that two months ago, 
I gate-crashed my sister's wedding. Yes, I did, and I was literally a walking bride of confusion, you see. My parents are Christians, so Emma and Jake had a church wedding since I was not invited to the wedding. Well, I decided to go on my own time, and I arrived just in time, as Emma and Jake were about to say their vows. Oopsie, I think I forgot to say that I showed up in a wedding gown. You know, a long, tailed, veiled wedding gown, to be precise. You all should have seen everyone's faces when I walked in through the decor and walked to the altar. Even the priest was in absolute shock, and he must have believed the bride was playing a prank until I unveiled my lovely face, and everybody saw that it was me. When my parents saw that it was me, they charged towards me in anger and tried to pull me away from the altar. My mom kept saying, what nonsense is this? Get out of here this minute. But I refused to leave. As usual, Emma tried to attack me, but one of her bridesmaids stopped her because they knew violence was not the answer at this moment. Well, after everybody had wrapped their head around what exactly was going on, I walked to Jake and told him that I was giving him the opportunity to dump that arrogant Emma and start a new life. With me. The moment I said that, my parents went absolutely livid. Then acted calm for the first time in a long time and they tried to talk to me in a very calm voice. Somehow, I knew Jake would not want to leave Emma at the altar like that. His family was there too and he did not want to betray them. So I opted for plan B and I told him I was pregnant. Well, yes, I was pregnant with Jake, and the minute I said that, Jake left Emma and ran to me in excitement, and I knew he always wanted a child. We talked about that a thousand and one times, guys, and I also knew Emma did not want any children. But Jake was willing to make that sacrifice because he believed Emma would change her mind in the near future. To cut the long story short, Jake and I walked out of church together, and their wedding was called off. I can still remember the screams and cries of Emma begging Jake to reconsider and not embarrass her like that in front of everyone. She even told Jake that she was ready for them to adopt a cat as their first child. And I can't forget how Jake held my arms when he told Emma that he didn't think that he could carry on with the wedding because they were not on the same page. I loved that she also experienced what it felt like to work so hard on something and then have something ruin it all of the hard work because of nothing more than selfish reasons. Walking out with Jake and having him call off the wedding was not the only thing that happened that day. I also got disowned by my parents. In fact, it was more of a threat. They threatened me that if I walked out of church with Emma's husband-to-be, they would disown me on the spot, and they did. It's not like disowning me is going to make any difference in my life. I was never a part of their family in the first place, you know. I'm just glad that... Jake's family has accepted me with love, and his mother is the sweetest woman that I've ever met. I've never thought that I'd say this, but I'm so happy I made that decision because I'm currently living my best life. As for Emma and my parents, every day they send at least five messages, each with new numbers telling me how much I'll suffer, and how karma will catch up with me, and... You know, she still just doesn't seem to get it. She's actually living her own karma. Right now, I'm much happier than I used to be alone, and it means a lot to me, you know. Thank you so much, guys, for the support and comments. Like I said, you guys are the best. So, believe it or not, there was quite a few comments in the original post and the updates who were not really happy about the way OP went about taking revenge. I mean, she did get together with someone else's man, and she got pregnant by him. But I do want to know... Do you guys think that this revenge style was justified or was it considered petty? Let's talk about it down below in the comment section, guys. I hope you enjoyed this one. This one, oh man, it was full of some drama, wasn't it? If you guys want to be a part of these daily stories, consider subscribing, guys. My name's Mr. Redito, and I narrate these every day. Have a great day, guys. Go out there and try to do something you've always wanted to do. I'll see you tomorrow. And of course, remember, it's cool to be kind. Peace.